Critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity. These are the skills that will drive our economy in the future. These are the skills that will prepare young people today for the world of tomorrow. These are called 21st century skills. These have been studied and discussed at the highest level of the educational system, and have been examined by some of the leading experts on pedagogy. But integrating them into modern public education is still a struggle. It's still a problem we're working desperately to solve. But you know what? The first time I heard that list, critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity, I thought to myself, those are all things we practice every day in games. Every day when you see someone play Call of Duty or League of Legends with their friends, you're seeing someone who's practicing communication and collaboration. When you see a child build a monument in Minecraft, they're exploring how to use their creativity. When someone plays Portal or Magic the Gathering, or even something like Risk, they're honing their critical thinking ability. We've got to be able to bring this to bear for education. We've got to use the things that games are so good at to reinforce the skills people of the future will so desperately need. The problem is that right now, as good as games are at getting us to practice these skills, they end up having very little impact on people's lives because most people playing them don't realize they're practicing them. They don't realize that the skills they use for the game are applicable in their real lives. This concept is sometimes referred to as transference, or a transfer of practice. It's a well-known phenomena in the educational world. It's just that often they're looking at it going the other way. For decades now, schools have been facing the problem of having students who will do alright on a math test, but not make the connection that that knowledge can be applied to many of their activities outside the schoolroom walls. In games, we have to look at it the other way. Almost every game has lessons applicable to life, but we don't make the connection as often as we need to. Games like Final Fantasy Tactics or Hearthstone teach us about order of operations. World of Warcraft teaches us discipline, teamwork, and often management skills. Even games like Farmville teach us how to function within a routine. But as players, we almost never see that. There's no transference there. We've been trained to check out when we play these games. So how do we harness their learning potential in schools? Well, the most obvious way is to beat the student over the head with the fact that they are learning something, which is what most edutainment does today. But big surprise, that method's pretty terrible, so we gotta find another route. And while I would love to offer you fancy design tricks for making that happen, there's actually a much simpler solution. Teachers. Teachers are just as important, if not more important, in a game-enabled classroom. In a classroom that utilizes games, games can be the part of the lesson that gets kids excited about ideas and teaches them fundamental concepts, while teachers make that knowledge meaningful. Teachers in such a classroom would relate the things students learned in games to the real world and build off those concepts, reinforcing them and structuring them as tools to be applied to problems later in life. Hopefully, in a classroom that integrates them, games could also free up teachers to spend more one-on-one -on -one time with students. While the class played, the teacher could have meaningful conversations with small groups, or sit with students who are struggling and explain to them the concepts they're finding hard to grasp. As a designer creating games for the classroom, you should be enabling and empowering the teacher. Because there's no silver bullet to education and games aren't going to solve everything. But if you build your experiences with a teacher in mind, there's an incredible amount we can do to make a teacher's job easier. Which brings us back to 21st century skills. The key struggle with 21st century skills is that they can't be learned by rote. They can only be learned by experience. And games, by their interactive nature, provide us with a platform for students to have that experience in a way that a textbook or a lecture does not. Through games, these 21st century skills, critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity can even be taught while other subjects are being presented. A game on science can get students to practice collaboration. A game on history makes students think about how they communicate. A game on math could make us hone our critical reasoning, and a game on art could push our creativity. In an interactive environment, we might not even have to carve out large chunks of time to build 21st century skills into our curriculum. So when someone asks you why we should have games in the classroom, tell them about the 21st century skills. Tell them about how important it is that we integrate them into our education. How important it is that we prepare the students of today for the world they'll be entering. A world more based on things like communication and collaboration than learning by rote. Tell them how these skills can't simply be memorized or learned out of a textbook. How they must be practiced. Tell them how powerful a tool as an interactive medium games can be to practice these very skills. And if they play games, tell them they're practicing these skills themselves already every day. See you next week.